A student uh, obtain a pure dry sample of a sand sodium chloride from a mixture of sand and sodium chloride. A student uses the apparatus shown. The method consists of six steps: A, B, C, D, E, and F. The order of the steps. What should be the order of the steps to obtain sand from water? Or separate the sand from water. What should be the order? Like which step should be first? A is done. A is the first. Then after A, what could be the second step? So after A, it will be C. Means we are adding a water stair. Then after C, what will be the step? After C, it will be F because uh, we'll filter out. So sand will be left on the filter paper and the salt solution will pass through. Then after F, it will be B. We will rinse the sand with water. So any salt is left that will also dissolve and remove. Then after B, it will be then it will be E. Leave the sand on a to dry on the filter paper. And then what is this? This is a solution, the salt solution. Even it is acceptable, like when you check the order, they accept different orders as well. So you can see the order variation is there. Because some of the student think like after F, it can be D. Means this, this we take and then we carry out B and E. So it is acceptable. Uh, complete the box, name the apparatus D, what we call this. What is the name of this apparatus? When we use a dish to evaporate the substance, that's called evaporating disk. So this is known as evaporating dish. Name the process, uh, why the sand rinse with water in B? What is the reason why we rinse the sand with water in uh, second, this B part? St stage B or step B. So what was the reason? Why a sand is rinsed with water? To make large clumps? Uh, no. Because the sand may have some uh, salt on it, so yeah, it will really it will remove it will remove the dissolved so it will remove the salt from it. So to wash out to dissolve or remove the salt. 
and in this case because the impurity is a salt so white is rinse the sand so sand does not dissolve in water it is used to remove salt from the sand Uh, name the process F. What we call process F. What is this process known as? Filtration. Filtration. How could the purity of sodium chloride can be checked? How we can check the purity of a uh, salt? Whether a salt is there are three ways we can check: melting point, boiling point, or chromatography. So, which technique we can use to check the purity of the sodium chloride here? There are three ways to check the purity of a substance. Check the melting point, boiling point, or use chromatography. So, which technique we will use here? A chromatography is used when you are testing whether a mixture having two or different colors or dyes, liquids mainly. It's a solid, sodium chloride, and you want to check the purity of a solid. So, the technique. Which we use to check the purity of a solid. That's for melting point. We will check the melting point. Chromatography is when two uh, or more miscible like liquids or uh, liquids are there. So there are three ways to check the purity. One is known as the melting point. Another one is boiling point, and the third technique is called chromatography. So you will check the melting point. Why you check the melting point here? Because the sodium chloride, how it exists, it is a solid. So for solid, we check the melting point. For to check the purity of a liquid or solution, we check the boiling point, or we can use chromatography. A student investigate the rate of a reaction between dilute nitric acid and a lumps of magnesium carbonate. The printers shown used lumps of magnesium carbonate are added to a conical flask. Forty cm cube of nitric acid was then poured into a conical flask using a measuring cylinder. The magnesium carbonate was in excess, like more than enough. The conical flask was placed on the balance. The cotton wool was placed. in the top of the conical flask the mass of conical flask and its content was measured and a timer was started the mass of conical flask in the content was measured every minute for 7 minutes use the balance diagram to record the mass on the conical flask and its content in the table complete the table to work out the total loss in mass so the first one it is 86 and there is no loss in mass in the beginning because that's a start the second value is 85 and uh, the loss in the mass is 1 the third one is uh each is representing 1 2 3 so 2 means uh, 84 point, point 2 is there for each 84.4 yeah and what is the loss in the mass loss in mass is you will compare from the beginning like from the start so it will be 1.6 now it's 84.1 just a minute i'll zoom in because it looks 
So this one is 86, 85, 84.4, 84.1, yes, it's between, then 84, then 83. Yeah. So for the last one, it does not change this. So this was 86, 85, 84.4, 84.1, 84, 83.9, and then 83.9, and 83.9. The loss in mass was zero. This is one, 1 1.6, 1.9, 1 2, 2.1, 2.1, and 2.1. Then draw a smooth line graph. So you have to uh, draw a smooth line graph for the time and the loss in mass. So loss in mass was uh, 0, 1, 1.6, 1.92. So when time is, so in, in the beginning it is 0. After 1 it is uh, 2. Then after two, it was 1.6. Then after three minutes, it was 1.9. Sorry. Uh, after one minute, it was one, sorry. I thought it was, yeah. This was one, then it was 1.6, 1 uh, 1.9, then 2.1, uh, then, sorry, two, 2.1, 2.1, and 2.1. So we have to draw a smooth line graph. So just join these points to make a smooth line graph. It should be a smooth line graph because I'm using a screen here so and a mouse so it's not completely look like a smooth but it should be a smooth line graph. Then for the next part, average rate. Calculate the average rate of a reaction first 30 seconds. So rate of a reaction change in amount divided by, this is minute, so 30 second, half of the minute. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 3, 4, and 5. So 0 0.5 minutes is equals to 30 second, half minute. So we'll find what is the mass. So mass is 0 0.5 and the time is also 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5. Uh, so 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5, that's equal to 1. So rate is equal to 1 and the unit, because unit of mass is gram and unit of time is second. So it will be gram per second. Then experiment was repeated using excess of magnesium carbonate. All other condition, 
experiment is repeated using an excess of powdered magnesium carbonate so already magnesium carbonate was in excess but it's now powdered so what will be the how it will affect the shape of this graph use the screen annotation to complete this yeah uh, that's right uh, if i when i solve average rate and when i'm finding because it's 30 second that's right uh, so the mass was 0.5 and the time in terms because it's half minute or 30 second that's right if i use 0.5 like example 0.5 divided by 0.5 i'm getting one so my answer will be gram per minute in that case so either i change the value or i will get gram per minute so this was the original graph use the screen annotation to complete example this was the original graph use the screen annotation if we use a powdered form what will happen to the or how the shape of the graph will change so it will be steeper that's right what does uh, why does the mass of conical flask and it content decreases what is the reason why the mass here when we place this conical flask on the balance the mass decreases so why because this conic when cal magnesium carbonate is reacting with acid it is giving a carbon dioxide so it releases a gas or the content of the flask because the gas is the gas or the carbon dioxide or gas given off that's why the content mass is decreasing as there is a reaction between magnesium carbonate and nitric acid this will result in a formation of a gas and that gas can escape through cotton wool so as this gas escape or gas is given off that's why the mass of this content will decrease is it clear so the answer for this one is because a gas is given off or carbon dioxide gas the next part suggests the purpose of the cotton wool why we are using a cotton wool here yes yeah. so why the cotton wool is placed so we don't want the content of the flask to go out like when magnesium carbonate is reacting with acid we don't want them to go out when they are reacting that's why we place a cotton wool so preventing you can see allow the gas to escape that's one thing and preventing loss of acid or acid or does not loss by evaporation prevent evaporation it's a, uh, not mentioning evaporation actually what happens sometime when a reaction between the two substances is a violent reaction then splashing might occur like it might splash so to if, when even a splashing occur when we place a cotton wool acid cannot escape due to that splashing 
and it will return to the flask. Only the gas can pass through. So you will not mention by uh, prevent evaporation because evaporation is a slow process. It does not affect mass too much here for the experimental time period, only in seven minutes. So it prevent it allow the gas to escape and prevent the acid. Allow the gas, like one mark is allow gas to escape and prevent loss of acid due to not evaporation, due to splashing or violent reaction. Why does the level uh, graph level of and explain your answer means what why the glass this graph level of means there's no change in the law mass. Yeah, the reaction stop all here they already mentioned because uh, magnesium carbonate is in excess. So you can mention you cannot mention both reactant used up. You have to mention light all the nitric acid is used up. Not all reactant. All reactant is not acceptable because they already mentioned in the beginning that magnesium carbonate is in excess. So reaction finish one mark. All nitric acid has reacted. If you mention both reactant, then you will not get the second mark. So when you are reading a question, you should know that which of the reactant is excess and which one is a limiting. Give one advantage and one disadvantage of using a burette instead of measuring cylinder to add the nitric acid. What's the advantage? It's accurate. What disadvantage? It will take time to transfer the solution. Accurate is so advantage more accurate disadvantage it is slow like take time to transfer the solution. <coughs> salt identification two salts G and H were analyzed test was done on each solid test on solid G. A flame test was carried out in a lilac color. What this gives an idea which metal is present in this G. If there's a lilac color, a flame color is lilac, which metal is present? Potassium. So this gives potassium is there. G was dissolved, dilute hydrochloric acid and it is warm and produce a gas which is tested with acidified potassium. This is a test for sulfite ion. Sulfite means SO3. Name the gas produced in test 2. Which gas is given off in test 2? This is a test for sulfite ion, but which gas is released in test 2? This is a test for sulfite ion and the gas which is released when we add hydrochloric acid to a compound which is having sulfite, the sulfur dioxide gas is there. So the gas release is sulfur dioxide. The question is, name the gas produced in test two. So which gas is produced in test two? As you can see, when dilute hydrochloric is added and we warm, a gas is produced which turn acidified potassium manganate from purple to colorless. So the gas release is sulfur dioxide and this is actually a test for sulfite ion. Sulfate is barium nitrate or barium carbonate, uh, barium chloride or barium nitrate for uh, sulfate ion, but for sulfite ion, which is SO3, 
we add hydrochloric acid and heat. So name the gas produced in test two. So the gas is sulfur dioxide. Probably sulfite ion is there. This is a test for the sulfite ion. When you go through the test, you will learn that if you yeah. want to test a sulfite ion, sulfite ion means it contain SO3. So when you are adding a hydrochloric acid to a sulfite ion, a solution which contain a sulfite ion, you add hydrochloric acid and you heat it. So when you heat, this sulfite ion decompose and it release sulfur dioxide gas. And that sulfur dioxide convert acidified potassium manganate from purple to colorless. So these are the tests which you have to learn. Identify solid G. What is solid G? It's potassium sulfide, IT. Sulfide means sulfur, but it is So because of the flame color, we identify potassium and that's the second one is a test for the sulfite ion. So it is the solid G is potassium sulfide. Test on solid H. Solid H is calcium nitrate. Complete the expected observation. Solid H was added to a distal water and the test tube was shaken and dissolved. Drops of sodium hydroxide were added to first portion. If we have calcium ion in the solution and we add sodium hydroxide, what is the observation? It will give white precipitate, that's right. So white PPT. An excess of sodium hydroxide. What will happen to precipitate? The precipitate does not dissolve. White precipitate in, remain insoluble. An excess of aqueous ammonia was added. If we add aqueous ammonia to a calc to a compound which contain calcium ion. What is the observation? No visible change, no reaction. I told you to memorize these tests. You have to learn these tests for the ions positive and negative. A dilute nitric acid and silver nitrate was added to third portion. Nitric acid, this silver nitrate is a test for chloride, bromide or iodide. And you can see there is no chloride, bromide, or iodide in this. So what we'll observe, it will be no visible change. No visible change or no reaction. Is it clear till now? So you have to just recall like the test for the specific ions. Then <clears throat> dilute nitric acid They did specify the salt, they mentioned the salt in the beginning. The so, uh, test on solid H, H is a calcium nitrate. So they specify there's a calcium ion and there's nitrate ion. So it does not have any other chloride, bromide or iodide. That's why there is no visible change when you are adding a silver nitrate or silver, uh, silver salt, even lead nitrate you add. Aluminum foil, 
and sodium hydroxide. This is a test for nitrate. Aluminium foil and sodium hydroxide and heat. The mixture was warm and the gas produced was tested. Observation. So what you will observe? A pungent gas. A pungent gas is there and which will turn turn red litmus blue. So this was 10 mark question. Then this is the last question of paper uh, six. Planning of experiment. So what is the question? Propanone and ethyl ethanoid, both are solvent which can be used to remove paints. So we can use propanone or we can use ethyl ethanoid to remove the paint. Plan an investigation to determine which of these two solvent is a better to use. We have to plan the whole experiment. It's not like the mentioning a technique, it's of six marks. So planning of experiment, you have to plan. So chromatography is the chromatography is used to separate the two substances from each other. We don't have to separate the two substances. Like we have to plan experiment, which of the two solvents is better to remove the paint. Plan an investigation to determine which of the two solvent is better to use to remove the paint. So what we will do, we will apply the equal amount of paint on two slides, two glass slide. So it's a, it's about a comparison. So we'll apply equal amount of paint on two glass slides. Then add equal amount of solvent, like one slide we will add propanone and another slide we will add we'll add ethyl ethanoid then we will rub because the paint will not be removed and we'll start the timer and record the time taken by each solvent to remove the paint and compare the time interval. The one which take the shortest time to remove the paint is a better solvent. Or what you can do, you can add like adding drops of uh, solvent and checking which how many drops of each solvent required to remove the paint. The one which required the few less drops, few drops is a better solvent to remove the paint. So this experiment, like in the marking scheme, you can see different ways you can write. Comparison is there. So what you can do, how the distribution of the mark, coat the, or the paint, the glass light. That's first thing. Then with the same amount or thickness of the paint, then we dry, because the paint should be dry, so dry the paint, then add drops of propanone until the paint coating is removed. Then count how many drops you are using or volume and repeat with ethyl ethanoid and compare. You, you will, in exam, you will not write compare and conclusion. You will mention like the one which uh, required less amount or a few drops of solvent is a better solvent. Like if ethyl ethanoid is uh, requiring less amount, then it is a better solvent or if propanone required less amount, it will be better solvent. What else you can do? You can weight the slide, add equal amount of paint, leave it to dry, immerse the slide into two containers, then fix the volume of the solvent, then for then dry and reweight again. The one which you are greater change in the mass is a better solvent. Is it clear? This experiment.
So this is a paper six. You, you find it's not that difficult. It's duration one hour. And even if you are, you practice these papers, maximum it will take 25 minutes. Even 25 minutes, you can finish this paper. Any doubt related to this paper? <clears throat> so this was October, November, 2000. 18 paper.